Hey, I'm Bill Lee. I'm a seventh generation Tennessean. I have a master plumber's license. I live on a Hereford cattle farm and I'm running for governor. Just yesterday, the Democrat and Another race in for this the race, incumbent is not running for the election. Yeah, just yesterday, they're voting, they're voting those candidates for the president. The and since he isn't on the ballot, they'll be supporting his candidate in this race for U.S. Senate. They want to do to diminish your Second Amendment rights. Taylor Swift coming off the political sidelines today. We begin with the midterms, of course, and the exit poll results already coming in Republican right now. Republican Marsha Blackburn beat out Democrat Phil Bredesen. It's a tremendous, humbling honor to be your next governor of the state of Tennessee. Over the course of this series, we have discussed the state of Tennessee's education system in the context of leaders like Governor Bill Haslam and Education Commissioner Candace McQueen. But the 2018 midterm elections has consequently shifted power into the hands of our newly elected state officials, which will definitely impact Tennessee education in the years to come. Where Bill Haslam believed Tennessee's education system needed some minor tweaks, newly elected governor Bill Lee has called for some new radical reform. Every student should have at least some vocational training. It might mean welding, it might mean coding, it might mean ag. In addition to a new governor, Tennessee has elected Marsha Blackburn as a senator. Though Blackburn supports redistributing education power more evenly between the federal, state, and local government, education reform seems to fall low on her priority list compared to other policies. Let me tell you something, Tennesseans want to see that wall built. I'll fight to build the wall. To build the wall. Uh, he has said that building the wall is political theater. I'm going to be there to make certain we build the wall. Are you willing to spend that estimated $70 billion on a physical wall? Walls work. Just ask Israel. In the wake of the election, Education Commissioner Candace McQueen stepped down, leaving important decisions of testing and education up in the air. But despite these drastic shifts in leadership, the fundamental issues with Tennessee education discussed thus far in this series remain the same. Standardized testing is in desperate need of reform. But where do we even begin? Some might argue that we should just get rid of testing altogether. However, the political gridlock would make such a drastic change impossible. Others have suggested techniques like starting from scratch, game-based assessments, and stealth assessments, all of which are too drastic for a state like Tennessee, who is usually the last up to bat in making radical changes. Ultimately, in order to fix what the Tennessee Education Department has gotten wrong, we need to consider what other states have gotten right. Take Massachusetts, for example, a state consistently ranked number one in the nation for education. For citizens here, prioritizing education is a common goal shared by individuals across all parties and districts. So the, the, the economy is benefiting from all those smart people in, in the technology sector. So they're doing everything. You're quality of life. And they've got a, a quality of life, and they've got a, they've got a pretty good political system. I have to, you know, the governor <laughs> can tell you all about that, but they do some things right. So, for, Governor, why is your state performing well in those categories? Well, I think part of it, as Brian said, is we have a lot of really smart people. We have a lot of great schools. Um, that has led to a whole series of terrific, what I would call, ecosystems around uh, technology and healthcare and, and finance and um, education. And you put it all together, and in this day and age, in this kind of global economy and global world we live in, it's a, it's a terrific mix. We also do have, I, and I've said this before, um, a bipartisan approach to working together. People are okay with the ideas of compromise and collaboration. And if you look at the success we've had, policy-wise in the education, healthcare, and economy spaces, energy, and a whole bunch of others, they've all been things that have been done on a bipartisan basis. Yeah, People, it is interesting. I mean, there's a Republican governor in what's generally considered a Democratic state. Oh, it's definitely a Democratic <laughs> state. In 1993, Massachusetts moved to take its education standards above and beyond with an Education Reform Act. First, the state prioritized education spending, pulling finances from across the board to establish a budget mandating at least $5,500 to be spent on each pupil. Second, Massachusetts reformed their education standards to emphasize STEM education, especially for minorities, females, and low-income students. Third, Massachusetts locked down a standardized testing system utilized only as a method for pinpointing districts in need of financial support. Finally, the state set higher standards and goals for its education department, a mandate requiring the implementation of annual testing of teachers, more hours spent in schools, and higher graduation rates across the board. 
With the implementation of these changes, Massachusetts rose to number one in education nationally. And with higher graduation rates, better equipped teachers, and a concentration on STEM education, the state was able to produce a new generation of workers equipped to combat other issues the state faced, such as health care, economic disparities, and overall quality of life. And to be fair, Massachusetts is a state vastly different from Tennessee, both economically and politically. But we don't have to look much further than East Tennessee to find model districts in search of a better education for students. Key 7, which asks all of our students to participate in advanced placement, dual enrollment, industry certification, or our Navy JROTC program. Innovation, technology, and creativity are what Oak Ridge was based on. We continue that legacy through our focus on STEM and project-based learning. What has made both Massachusetts and Oak Ridge so successful is a bipartisanship and a major investment in their students. Tennessee as a whole, on the other hand, lacks both accountability and unity in its Department of Education. In turn, this unfortunate reality affects Tennessee's students and teachers, even right here at the Ellen STEM Academy. state government, education, people in charge of education just don't really care because they're more concerned about the statistics they're getting back on the students and how that reflects us on the state as a whole and not how the students, how much the students are actually learning, how, how they feel about how they're being taught. Well, I think that's good because too much standardized testing simply ask specific questions and you have to answer them in specific ways and most of us think in not specific ways we think more creatively we think in all different kind of ways so it's much better if we can give other kinds of tests at the end of the day being a leader in the state of tennessee should amount to more than political discourse over national security or immigration control we need to come together as a state refocusing our energy and casting aside political differences for the sake of the next generation ultimately it's time for Tennessee to prioritize education above all else. When we began this series, we sought to answer the question, is Tennessee failing its students? It would be ridiculous for us to have claimed to answer this question as we lack the time and resources to address topics such as inner city schools, arts and STEM funding, and charter schools. What we can say is this, Tennessee has a broken standardized testing system that is further reflective of bipartisan in education and a lack of focus on our state's students. We hope that in looking to other areas of the country who have prioritized education, Tennessee will make the adjustments necessary for a better future for our students.